This is going to be a video on the location of all the electrical components of the engine. Uh, I'll just go through them from start to finish just so people know where they are. Uh, but for the start, the DME or the engine uh, ECU is back here behind the liner in the rear boot. As you can see, I've removed the intake manifold. I've just put the, the resonance tube back in there just to show you where a couple of things are on that. Then I'll just remove this and show you everything underneath because most of the stuff is much more easily seen when the intake manifold is removed. So on the top here, you have the intake manifold pressure sensor, single screw there. This thing just wiggles out and then you can plonk the new one back in there. That takes five Newton meters to uh, to install. You've got the throttle body here, the intake manifold, center portion or the rubber boot at the back which is also pretty difficult to remove. would need to come out to replace this. That has four screws around it. There's a single plug on the bottom left down here uh, and on install those four screws take 10 Newton meters. The camshaft adjuster on each side is in that position there. There's another one over there. They have two M5 screws on them, take six Newton meters when they are installed. A simple plug with a, one of those wire connectors, you just press and pull it off. And that thing just pulls out, put a new one in there, and um, pretty easy to replace. If you want to check the oil pressure, there are two ports, one on each side, there's one there, and there's one over there. They say to use the one on this side over here because it's more easily accessible because you don't have all the coolant and stuff in here because there's not much for gap when the intake manifold's in. And they say to check the oil pressure. You want to have PWAS connected so you can see what the oil temperature is because what you have in the cabin is not the engine oil temperature, it's a combined temperature. So using PWAS, check that the oil temperature is at least 90 degrees Celsius and then you're going to check that you have at least one and a half bars at idle and at least two and a half bars at 3000 RPM is the spec. Up the front here, in the middle here, this is the knock sensor, so the intake manifold would need to be removed. To remove that, uh, they take 23 Newton meters on install. You would just disconnect the electrical connector there, unscrew that, and I think they just pull straight off. The knock sensor on the other side is underneath this bracket here, which is very easy to remove. You just unscrew that, and this thing's quite loose. This thing just rotates out of the way, and you can just push it up here to get access to the knock sensor on the other side. The coolant temperature sensor, which is the indication that you get in the, the cabin, is straight down here. And it's just, I mean, whilst I could easily get access to this with the intake manifold uh, off, it would be difficult otherwise because um, yeah just getting your hands down there you get access to it but getting your hands down there might be a little bit difficult so it's down there and uh, on install that just unscrews out and 30 Newton meters on install these are the high pressure fuel pipes and the injectors live underneath here connections for the injectors there are two screws at on each side so there's one there there, there, and there. So if you wanted to remove those, we'd need to remove the high pressure fuel pipe first. And then once we do that, we can uh, remove those screws and remove the, uh, the injectors. That's a bit outside the scope of the video to actually remove those things. I'm probably not gonna do that with the car, but just to let you know where they are. Over this side here, this is the oil pressure and temperature sensor, it lives here. And if we pull that pipe that way, we can get access to the screws. They're both M6, 10 Newton meters. Disconnect the plug and then just pull it out and put a new one in. The crankshaft position sensor, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but it lives way down the back here. So I've got my screwdriver on the end of it there. So it's about 15 centimeters lower than where my hand is. It's got a single screw on this side and a single electrical connector and um, that would just get wiggled out. You would, I can actually get my hand down there and get my hand onto it pretty easily. So from in here, even with the intake manifold on, I reckon you'd be able to easily get that, that off. Here is the high pressure uh, fuel sensor. Uh, disconnect that plug there and that just comes straight off 22 Newton meters on install.
The camshaft position sensor sits right next to the oil filter housing. So that's on the bell housing in between obviously the engine and the transmission. This is the tank vent valve, a single connection point there that comes off. And then this pipe would normally be clipped to the uh, intake manifold and then it goes around and just plugs onto the top of the intake manifold. This whole hose, including the electronics, are uh, one unit and that runs down to uh, the bottom left below the engine there where it's connected and then goes to the front to the fuel tank. So this whole thing is one piece. Down underneath here is the coolant level sensor right there. You would be able to get access to it from underneath because with the intake manifold in here, you're not going to be able to, uh, to get access to it. And you'd be doing it by feel, but there's a single electrical connector. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. There's one there and then it pulls off towards the front. It's just a simple press and release and then that thing rotates around towards the centre like that. And then that should come out. I'm doing this all by feel. There you go. There it comes. I won't pull it out but you can see that come out. Then you're just going to put the new one in. Rotate it around. And put the electrical. The engine bay fans on each side. You get access to those either from the top or well, certainly the right hand one, the left hand one would be fairly difficult with the coolant, um, the expansion tank, etc. But they say you can get access from underneath. You just remove the, uh, the rear underfloor panelling. And on the left hand side, they also talk about uh, removing the fuel line from a holder there just to give you a little bit more access in the equivalent position down the bottom here. But to remove these, there's a single clip there and you just move that hopefully you'll be able to see this but that one there like that pull it down and then the clip comes off and to remove the fan itself once you've got the plug disconnected is you just pull this off it's on four uh, rubber mounts uh, there's no screws or anything and it just pulls straight off so I'll just pull it off there and as you can see that would easily be removed this is the engine bay temperature sensor single clip that just allows that to get disconnected and that will just be pressed into a little holder on the side of the intake manifold so that just gets pulled straight out. On the side of each head there's a whole bunch of stuff just working from front to rear. Up the front here, that one there, that is the camshaft position sensor, that's really easy to remove. There's just a single plug that just gets disconnected, gets pulled off the bottom. There's a single T30 uh, M6 torque screw at the top of that thing. Uh, you remove that and access to it is actually easier from sort of forward of the exhaust. Uh, you pull that out and the thing just pops straight out. There's no ring on it. And that can be replaced pretty easily. So we've got the we've got the spark plug coils here. They have a single T30 Torx on them, uh, 10 Newton meters on install. And interestingly, uh, above them, it's up in here, it's a bit hard to see. For the forward two coils, there is a single ground, and for the rearward coil all the way back here, it has its own. So each coil has its own ground that goes to the, the valve cover. Uh, back in here, this is the uh, variable valve lift adjuster. So this is the solenoid that does the variable valve lift. There are two uh, E8 uh, M5 torque screws that uh, come off and they take 8 Newton meters when you uh, install. Uh, the difficulty with this is it's quite well reset in here and if you disconnect or getting your thumb in there to actually disconnect that plug is going to be really hard to start off with. But you need the plug disconnected to get the thing out. So when I did this uh, remove one of the screws, then remove the other one, leave it threaded in a little bit, then grab hold of the plug and pull the plug out like with the cord. It's not in there very tight, but you just need to do that to get the thing moving. And then once it's uh, moved, then you can get a screwdriver in here, lift this metal tab to disconnect the plug. And then once the plug is disconnected and moved out of the way, then just remove the last few threads of that last torque screw. And uh, then the whole thing just comes out really easily. 
We've got the oxygen sensors here. I made a separate video on how to remove and install those. We've got the coils here and the spark plugs. I made a separate video uh, on how to remove and install those. So have a look at those if you need to do that. This is the oil level sensor. Three screws, remove those. Make sure that you drain the oil first, otherwise the oil will drain very rapidly uh, the moment you remove that uh, single plug and put the new one in there, they get 10 Newton meters on install. Coolant thermostat is up in here. There are three E10 Torx screws that need to be removed. There are two that remove this cover and then the electrical plug underneath can be disconnected. Um, and then with the coolant drained, that can just pop straight out to be replaced relatively simply. Over here, inside that runs all the way down in the pan here is the oil pressure regulating valve. To remove this would be quite an effort if it fails. You need to drain the oil um, and you need to drain the coolant because the coolant needs to come out so we can remove this hose here because then it gives us access on like down in this direction here to remove. You can remove the two e torque screws quite happily but then you need to get down there with a screwdriver and disconnect the plug. There's a single press on it to pull that out. Then this shroud here, which goes down about sort of that far, needs to come out. And then you need to get a long 36 mil socket um, to get in there and remove the ring that holds the valve in place. And then once that comes out, then the valve itself can be removed. You need a special relay puller with sort of these square jaws on the end of it to stick down uh, in here and pull the thing out. So it's quite an effort to remove that. Underneath the car in the tunnel, uh, that's the rear of the car looking that way, and this is the left-hand coolant pipe, which is the return pipe. This is the temperature sensor for the coolant for uh, the temperature coming after the radiator. So it's telling the ECU how well the radiators are working, does it need to turn the fans up, etc.